Language. What does the Bible say about our words? Are all words bad words? Should we or should we not use specific words? All of those coming up in just a moment. Words in the Bible. What does the Bible say? It says a lot of things, but we're looking at words. So let's see. God created all things through words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so on and so forth. But God said, let there be light. And there was light. That's in there. Universe. Ever wonder what that word means? Uni. One. Verse. Sort of self-explanatory there. One verse. Let there be light. Sounds like a verse. God spoke and it was made. So God obviously used words for something. Matthew twelve thirty six through 37 I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. That's kind of scary, isn't it? I mean, we are going to be judged by our words, according to this. So, if I go around telling people really mean things, I'm going to be judged on that. And not only am I going to be judged, but I have to give an account. Do you really want to be that guy standing up there on Judgment Day, looking Christ, who will be the judge on Judgment Day, in the eye, and saying, well, the reason why I was mean to people and I said really hateful things on Twitter and YouTube and stuff is because fun? You know, the reason why I hurt people's feelings and made fun of them is because, you know, what? Because I was bored? Ooh, I was bored! Ooh. You know, I don't think you're going to get off that easy for things like that. And God is going to be like, mm-hmm. So you did it just because you were bored and... This seemed like a good idea. You know, did did you feel like going off and committing mass murder while you were bored? Would that have been, been okay? You know, raping a bunch of women? Would that would that have been an okay thing to do while you were bored either? Remember, the Bible is ultimately summed up into two words. Good relationships. It's hard to keep good relationships with people when you're constantly hurting them. I mean, there there's, you know... Playing around with your friends, I do it with my friends, you know, we make fun of each other in play, and we know we're playing. You know? I can even get all of my friends to recite, Ben is a horrible person. I even get them all to recite it together, Ben is a horrible person, because I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm having fun. But there's a point where you cross that line of having fun and start hurting people, and that's, you know, that's sort of like, there's, there's a difference between, you know, playful hits or, you know, bumping elbows, you know, doing the little kid slap, and then punching someone in the face. There's kind of a difference. The Bible is clear that God is about relationships. Remember those two words, good relationships. With words, intent is more important than what is spoken. You know, there, there are things that on paper seem perfectly natural, not hurtful at all. But when said in a certain way, with anger, with disgust, um, with contempt, you know, it can really be bad things. On paper, it may just say, you know, you may say, you're beautiful. That's a compliment, right? But let's change how it is. You're beautiful. Doesn't sound nice anymore. So, you know, if you intend to hurt someone with words, you can do it really hard. You know, people may just say, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, and in a way, that's true. You know, they won't kill you, they won't make you bleed to death, and you can step away from things. And I've I've received, I, I was a, actually a bullied when I was in middle school, and both physically and verbally. So, you know, the, the words don't hurt as much. Eventually, they hurt but eventually you get to a point where you can just stop caring about what's being said. But at the same time, 
why should, why are these people doing it? You know? Why do they do that? It's not fun for anyone. I mean, they may get some sort of perverse enjoyment out of it. But, you know, you can't control other people, but you can control yourself. So watch what you say. Don't be that person. You know, don't be the bad guy. What's in a word? Words are not inherently evil. However, they can be misused to hurt and destroy people. I don't think any word is evil. You know, I don't believe that any word is, is ultimately wrong. Because evil cannot create. Evil can simply corrupt. So, knowing that ultimately, if something's original, if something's brand new, we can easily say evil did not make that. But we can say evil corrupted that, that idea, that thought. Words are not wrong. People are wrong. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Yeah. Countries aren't evil. People are evil. Ideologies aren't evil. The people who use ide ideologies are evil. That's, that's sort of the basis. It's deep down. It's all about people using things. Everything's a tool. It's a tool to build or destroy, what have you. The way words are spoken are more often the reason that they cause damage. I just mentioned this before. You, know, you can say things in one way, and they can be perfectly fine. You can change it around and say it a different way, and suddenly they become very hurtful or mean. So, watch what you say. A bigger thing is, watch how you say. Context of words change the meaning. Sometimes from something bad to something good. I don't think that I really need to explain that, but I'll quickly mention that there are some words out there that when said a certain way, they can be bad. Um, and then when flipped around, they can be meant for good. Um, you know, gay used to mean happy. So, are you gay? I'm very gay today. Used to mean, I'm very happy today. And now it means, you know, if you say, I'm gay, it means you're a homosexual. Context, everyone. Context. That is the most important anyone needs to learn when talking about words. Context is the most important thing. If you walk in on half a conversation, you may never understand truly what's going on, and you may only think badly about something or someone, even though they were only talking good about that person. Words are tools. Use them to build up, not to tear down. We can hurt a lot of people with words. We can do a lot of damage with words. But why? You know, what ultimately does that gain? I mean, yes, there are times that things have been built based upon a bad premise and you have to sort of destroy it, the premise and let the entire building crash down before you can rebuild the foundation of something honest and truthful. But in that case, you're being constructive. You know, progress isn't always going forward. Sometimes it's turning around and going, Back. You take a wrong path in the labyrinth of life. Sometimes your path is quite a ways behind you. You have to return to it. But all that tearing down will do is simply cause issues. Suggest, suggest possible solutions. Don't just give rude comments. You know, don't say you suck. That doesn't help anyone. You suck. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah. Good to know that I suck. What do I suck at? I, you know, you suck is a very ambiguous term. Um, do I suck at playing video games? Do I suck at, you know, being a guy? Do I suck at... What, what do I suck at? You suck. Well, why don't you tell me how I suck so I can, you know, try and prove it? Now, if you say, I think this is a very terrible... I, I don't like this part of what you do because XYZ, but I think that if you did ABC, 
it might improve. In that case, you are giving constructive criticism, and I can do something with that. I can change myself in a... Well, I can look at it objectively and say, is, are they right or are they wrong? If they are right, then I should change. If not, well, then, you know, throw it in the pile in the back. But saying you suck or you're a moron or things like that, that doesn't help anyone. That doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help you. It makes you look stupid. I mean, come on. You're a moron. Oh, boy. Congratulations. You learned that in preschool? Five-year-old can do that. Five-year-olds do do that. You know, if you can't give constructive... If you can't say anything helpful, don't say it at all. It doesn't mean what you think it means. Yes, I did rip that off of Princess Bride. Do I care? Not really. Because it's, it's actually an effective thing. Bastard! Noun! Dictionary.com A person born of unmarried parents. An illegitimate child. There's a lot of bastards in the world. And not the kind a lot of people just thought of. They're the kind that have no fathers because parents never got married. There's a lot of those. And you can find them on a lot of reality TV shows and things like that. And I really feel bad for them. You know, it's not a fun place to be. I don't think people were like, I'm a bastard child. It's the best thing ever. I mean, some people may be like that if they meet their fathers and their father's like the worst person in the world. But on a whole, not a fun thing, but it's, it's a correct use of the word. And the word is not a cuss word as such damn verb dictionary.com to declare something to be bad unfit invalid or illegal it's in the bible folks king james version you can find it in there damn i think you can find bastard in there also hell you can find that in the bible also now in dictionary.com all of this is dictionary.com because it's easy to look up the place or state of punishment of the wicked after death. The abode of evil and condemned spirits. Gehenna or Tartarus, also known as Hades in some respects. That's hell. When these words are used correctly, they do not mean anything wrong. I mean, they're not, maybe not the nicest things, but they're not anything like really crude or rude or terrible. However, when they're misused, they become something bad. I don't really need to help anyone with that. You can probably figure it out on your own what, how the, to misuse those words. But when they're used correctly, they have a very perfectly legitimate reason. They do... That's supposed to be a why there. They do mean what you think they mean, not the do. But they do mean what you think they... They do mean what you think they mean. The F word. It's a verb. Dictionary.com. To have sexual intercourse... With. Not something I'd normally talk about in idle conversation. The S word. Noun. Dictionary.com. Excrement. Feces. Oh boy. Where are we in middle school again? Actually, elementary school was where, you know, bathroom jokes were really prominent. B word. Dictionary.com. A female dog. Refer to all of your friends like that. I bet they love you for it. These words, even when not misused, are not things that one would speak in a civil conversation. If you got two English gentlemen together and had them talk about the weather, I doubt they would use those words in it. Because let's face it, they're not really words that ought to be used. I mean, let's let's just, you know, change it. it you know, sex that. No, that just that just doesn't make much sense, you know. Oh, poo. Well, now you found, sound like you're a middle, you know, middle schooler or an elementary schooler. So you sound like a kid. Are we supposed to, you know, grow up out of that, you know, mature and everything? Hmm. You know. Oh, you female dog, you. Okay, now that sounds sexist. I mean. Calling women female dogs is kind of a sexist thing. And when applying it to guys, well, then you're just really misusing something. 
that's it it just doesn't work well some of might be appropriate in some contexts like if you're actually talking about a female dog excrement feces or having sexual intercourse with they are best left at home because let's face it unless you're using them with friends or things who actually couldn't care less about you using them it just sounds you know kind of dumb i mean why do you think that when giving us dress to the people or things like that presidents congressmen all of those people don't start going and now you know i just want to talk about that you know b word republican whatever or you know f that democrat senator because it's not being civil conversation and it just makes you sound like a moron i'm sorry people just stop misusing words and stop using words that don't even apply to what you're talking about now is it wrong to use the alternative to things like this like darn and drat and gosh and things like that go ahead those words were actually made to be alternatives they were made for the purpose of expressing disgust and things like that if you're so you're using those correctly you're not even misusing them you're using them absolutely you're applying them for what they are and it's okay you know some people are like we have a zero tolerance policy to people saying drat or darn or things like that why that's what they're there for that's like getting mad at someone for you know doing their job it's like you cannot fill out that form phil even though that is your job to fill out forms you cannot do that because i am offended by what possibly may remind me of for some other person filling out forms don't care so summing it up not all words are bad in fact some words most words are very good actually no words are bad all words can be used correctly but you know not every word should be used whenever you feel like it some are best avoided because of their inherent inappropriateness i leveled out a few of those for you i you can probably take a look through the dictionary if you really want to figure all of them out and come up with them and some you may just want to avoid for the controversy you may want to avoid things like saying gay boy i'm gay today because people take it differently than they did you know, 40 years ago it doesn't mean the same thing it's funny to watch watch old tv shows or movies and things like that and someone says gay and you know they're meaning happy but all you can think about is what everyone talks about today if used correctly some can be appropriate mainly of the cuss word area and some are best left to individual people dealing with individual people how words are communicated often change what they mean say it nicely or don't say it at all you know unless you actually mean to hurt someone which sometimes you know it's it's worthwhile i mean even christ said you den of vipers and he probably didn't say it in a nice way he wasn't like oh you den of vipers you <laughs> i'm jesus and i love everyone equally and we're just best of friends and sunshine and rainbows and unicorns I think it was more along the lines of, you freaking den of vipers, you, you, and, you know, so on and so forth. You can read the rest in the Bible. I don't need to go on a tirade for you. You were, use words to build people up, not bring them down. Be constructive, not destructive. As in one case, no one gets helped, and the other, everyone gets helped. And remember the two words all scripture can be summed up in good relationships.